विविध आध्यात्मिक विषयहरूमा सयौं प्रवचन दिनु भएको छ ती प्रवचनहरू मध्ये आज एउटा प्रस्तुत गर्न पाएकोमा हामी धन्य महसुस गर्दछौं जसको शीर्षक छ वातावरणको सम्बन्धमा परम गुरु चिङ्हाइको भनाइ हामीले जुनसुकै मूल्य चुकाएर भए पनि यस ग्रहलाई जगाउनु पर्छ दुई भाग मध्येको दोस्रो भाग बिटविन मास्टर एन्ड डिसाइपल्समा जुन अगस्त आठ दुई हजार नौमा फ्रान्समा अङ्ग्रेजी भाषामा दिइएको थियो द ओन्ली रिजन आवर प्लानेट इज स्टिल ह्याङ्गिङ इन देयर बिकज अफ सम भर्चुअस पिपल नट नेसेसरिली माइ डिसाइपल्स अलोन नट नेसेसरिली द पिपल हु प्र्याक्टिस भर्चुअस द पिपल हु फलो द फुटस्टेप of Christ, of Mahavira, of Guru Nanak, of the Buddha, of Prophet Muhammad, the footsteps of the way of loving kindness, of benevolence, compassion. That's the only footstep we should follow. There's no other alternative. Can you see? Yes? No plan B. So I... Thank all of you for all your little or big effort to do it together. I'm really grateful, yes. Of course, you're saving your planet as well. But I am grateful for your noble intention, yes, for your extra strength to go an extra mile to help others and help ourselves. I guess many of us could not care whether we die tomorrow because we are assured by our own inner vision and practice, intuition as well, that we are going somewhere great and glorious, even if we shed this physical cover of the soul. I'm sure many of us will not care if we live or we die, because we know it's all up to the providence and up to the way we live our life. It's not how we die, it's how we live. <laughs> it's not when we die, it's up to the moment of death, what have we done with our life that we didn't waste it, that we've been a useful tool of God for others. That is the true meaning of living a good life. Good life is not always having a lot of money, <laughs> big house, big car, or anything. Good life is we face ourselves every day in the mirror knowing that we are all right, knowing that we're doing our best for others. So it's not because we care that we die or not die that we do all this. Just that, just the proper thing to do, to remind each other that uh, we have to be noble, benevolent, and good. So the question is, what would your message for the government and the media be so they understand that their words affect the whole nation? Mm. Understand. They do know that their words affect the whole nation. That's why they spoke to us, yeah? But unfortunately, some government leaders and governments even are misled for being too busy to inform themselves of the fact that 90% cause of the flu are indirectly related to the swine factory in that province. They have calculated, they have researched. Now, for example, like if in your country, in your area has a lot of swine factories, then in that province, have a lot more, yes, 90% related to the flu pandemic. And from then, spread out, of course, eh? but slower than the native house where the animals are breeding. The virus fly all over in the air, affect people. The workers who are in the farm directly are affected. And from then, it mixed with humans 
and other uh, flus from birds or other animals and become more deadly and then slowly or quickly spread out. So I guess your government or your president in particular should inform themselves more before they advise their citizens because they are the leaders. They should know what they are talking about. They should consult the expert, the scientists who are professional in this field before they speak. Because in Vietnam we say, our world is like an arrow. Don't just shoot at random. No, you can say it's as a bullet nowadays. Don't shoot at random. So please do it. Do your part, okay? You write. You write to the government. Write to your leaders. Send them the fact. And hoping, praying that they will read it. Sometimes people say that the meat industry being so powerful as it is, they can lobby anything. Lobby government, lobby Congress, lobby Parliament even, to support their business. To them, it's just business. But to the people, to the consumers, it's life and death. It's suffering or happiness. It's intelligence or dull-wittedness. It's not a business. A business should be providing to the people what they need to benefit them. And then, meanwhile, benefit yourself as well. That should be a good business. A business is not to give people poison either ignorantly or purposely to cause them harm, sickness, suffering, you know, agony in any kind, just to profit ourselves. That is not a proper business. For a Christian, for a Muslim, for a Buddhist, for a Jain, for a Sikh, none of us, none of these people should do any of this kind of business. Business to kill people, business to harm people, business to kill the innocent animals, they are no good business. They are contrary to God's will, and thus we should avoid. Your president has spoken what he thought is the best for your country's economy, yes, business, and the people. But he probably has been misinformed because being a president, he can't just spend his time doing research on, you know, what benefits and what harm of the food. That he entrusted to his food and beverage minister, perhaps, yes? And so whatever he is fed with, you know, whatever information on his desk, he trusted that is okay. That's why he announced it to his people that it is okay. It's a sad thing. It's a very sad thing. So help him if you can. Hmm? I hope you can. The problem with being president also is that not all the voice will reach him, like old-time king. It's difficult. You have to go through the whole host of bureaucracy, yeah? Maybe your letter will go nowhere. But who knows? I wrote a letter to President Obama. I wrote a letter to the European Parliament, European Commissioner, and they answer me. Yes, they say they will take heed, take notice of what I said. And my words, my advice will be in their heart, in their mind, in the days ahead. I appreciate these kind of leaders who do listen, but these are in democratic country. That's why I told you many times, I still like America. Yes, <laughs> I don't write always to the president, but I do write occasionally when it's necessary like I wrote to President Clinton for the Vietnamese refugees issue. I wrote to other presidents for the Vietnamese refugees at that time. And I wrote maybe about war, 
abortion stuff, only the necessary time. Because I know they're also busy. I don't want to be also another busy body messing up with government at work. I only write when really, truly necessary. But you are the citizen of your country. Please do something. Please write. You write together a big letter and you sign many people and send it. Huh? Get as many signatures as you can and send it. Or send first a letter and then get signature and send later again. Who knows? Maybe it will come to the leader's ears. Maybe not. Just hope for the best. At least you do your best. Hmm? I can't write to all the people. I can't write to all the presidents. I am trying, of course. Yes. I still will do it. But that is the thing with being president. Not all the information reach his desk. Sometimes the people surrounding him will screen it out. And sometimes the people around the president, not the president himself, but the people around him, sometimes they think, oh, we need some more money to support the president for the next term or this term or whatever term. So, you know, we turn the blind eyes to this case. We turn the blind eyes to that case. We don't give him this information. We just do it ourselves. Meat industry is one of the most powerful. You know, I told you meat, drugs, alcohol, cigarette. These are the top four most powerful industry. Almost like I'm alone against it, openly, yes? Other people also, maybe they're against it, but in a group, individually, you know, in a small scale, I'm against them, big scale, big time. So practically, I put myself in an unfavorable situation with many, because what's good for people, I have to promote. What is the truth, I have to speak out. I have no compromise in this. And so should not you. Hmm? That's why I told you, we have to begin from ourselves, yes? We have to practice benevolence, compassion, before we can tell others what to do, right? Yes. I told you, meat industry is very powerful. They can buy the government, lobby the parliament, bypass Congress. What do you think? Huh? Why there's so many advertisements about meat and milk everywhere? Even I didn't know that milk was harmful to human health until recently that we do research. And when we had met cow disease in those times even, they even say, oh, milk has nothing to do with met cow disease. Milk is safe. And people believe it. How? How can you take something safe from something sick? And mad cow disease is not curable even, it's deadly, it's fatal, every time. So how many more people we want to die for this piece of meat that we put in our mouth? How many children we want to kill for that piece of meat that we put in our mouth that we could even change for tofu or you know, gluten or any other things? And still stay healthy, happy and better even. Do you understand? This is a question we should ask ourselves. No plan B. No. Never. Now that we know the truth, we just speak it out. No plan B. No compromise. Whatever we say, if it concerns to people's life, children's health, families, happiness, we have to do it wholeheartedly. Some young people die now, young people even die from flu. Imagine how their parents suffer. Imagine how their sister brothers suffer. Some pregnant women die with full of hope in them, hope for the child to be born in their family, to bring happiness to her husband, to the parents, to grandmother, father. Just die like that. Flu, swine flu, for the piece of meat that we want to put in our mouth, which is filthy, poisonous, bloody, inhumane. 
So there's no plan B. Is there? No. Okay. I am not well recently. I am sick with everybody else. I don't have flu. A similar symptom anyway, <laughs> even though I don't have flu. Because what they call sympathetic response. When you love somebody, sometimes you take on the symptom as well. And so many people that I love, so I've been sick for many months. And of course, I have a human body. Even if I'm sick, I'm tired. There are people worse than me. People are in hospital between life and death. Children in hospital between life and death. Elderly people in hospital between life and death. Pregnant woman, youngster, you know, full of hope for the future, are in the hospital between life and death. All because of that piece of meat that we could change, that we could replace any time. And we have abundance of things to replace that piece of meat. So why not do it? Why? Why bargain? It's so simple. It's so easy. We cannot expect people to quit drugs, which is, <laughs> you know, a thousand times more difficult. We cannot expect people to quit cigarettes. We cannot expect people to quit alcohol when we cannot quit that little piece of meat, which is replaceable, which is not so addictive. So the leaders of all the countries, the government, the media should realize this. If we want to clean up our society, we have to clean up ourselves first. Very simple. And any information they can get, they must get it. Because being a president or leader of country, you should not be fooled. You should not be misled. You're supposed to be the leader. You can't be misled. There should not be any excuse, actually. But there might be some excuse. But still, nowadays, we should inform ourselves in a position of a leader to know what there is to know about what is good for our citizens, what is bad for our citizens. Before we speak, because as the old sayings say that, the words from our mouth is like the arrows. We can't just shoot it any time at random. The Chinese people say that before you speak something, you have to roll your tongue seven times. Roll it. Why? So that you don't speak nonsense. So that you don't speak too soon. Before you're informed. We all do this. Sometimes we thought we know this, we know that, but we don't always know the whole thing. So I only suggest that all the leaders have to inform themselves more. And the thing is, they are not informed. You see, how many medias informed the people at large about the harm of meat? Yes? And they also say, okay, cigarette is no good now and then. <laughs> Drug is no good now and then. Alcohol, no good now and then. Every day people are killed by drunk and driving including children and animals on the road. Uh, but uh, there's still no problem. Alcohol is still legal to sell. Do you hear me? Huh? Every day people die of cigarettes. Nobody report. People die of drugs. Nobody bothered to report too much. Now and again. And people even commit crime you know, broke up with families, causing agonizing situation in the house. Nobody report. Okay? Just uh, now and again, maybe a headline. Oh, somebody died because of drug. But that's it. Only if that person is uh, prominently famous, then maybe they say a few words, this person died because of drug. Sometimes even not. You know why? Lobby money. Some others say to the journalist, don't write it. He's famous. Keep him. Good image in the public eyes, even after he die, etc., etc. Then they don't print nothing. It depends on how much money you give. Then the news come out or not come out. I do 
what I do. I don't buy people. I don't buy fame. I don't buy applause. I don't buy praise. I'm still doing what I do, waiting for them to wake up, to turn around. I let them do what they want. They are business and business. You know, they are business who benefit people, who uphold the truth and virtue. They are business who degrading people and themselves in the first place. The one who sell this kind of business are degrading themselves. Most of all, before anybody else. Because the truth will always come out. This is a very sensitive question that you put to me. Yes, but I still tell you all the truth, okay? And I hope you convey that to your president. Mm -hmm.